ladies and gents, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Sorry, this would have started about 10 seconds ago, but I had the voice recognition on. So, you know, it messed up everything, so I had to start it over again. But that's okay, that's a technical glitch that y'all didn't need to know about. Oh, that's just too much information, sir. You don't have to tell us everything. Okay, just the important stuff, okay? Get to the nitty and the gritties, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gents, we have just brought to you all's attention that there is a process known as a petition to enforce an administrative order or an application to enforce an administrative order. Either way, vice versa, vice a vis, the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, can a private citizen file a petition for enforcement of an administrative order? Because normally it's done by attorneys and attorney general's offices. But guess what? Hold on now. Guess what? Hold on now. Y'all gets to do it. Do we? We get to do it? That's right. See, yes, a private citizen can file a petition of enforcement of administrative order as long as you are directly affected by it. Ah, look at that. There's no free legal advice. Nobody asks you for any free legal advice. We don't need no advice from you, mother... I'm sorry, apologize. What is an administrative order? Well, ladies and gentlemen, administrative order is an order from an administrator. <laughs> it's not the basics of it, okay? An administrative order is a legal document issued by an administrative agency, such as an environmental protection agency, that affects an individual, business, or other entity to take correction, corrective actions, or refrain from a certain activity. It describes the violation and the action to be taken and can be enforced by or in court. Uh-oh. So it's an order given, instructing somebody to do something from an administrative agency and you can get the courts to enforce that order? That's what it's saying. Oh, that sounds so simple. What, what's an example of an administrative order? I'm so glad you asked. Notice what it says. Administrative orders are written notices to government officials to landowners or occupants of lands, informing them of violations and actions to be taken. They can be issued as a result of an administrative hearing or investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, not on private property they can't. They have no jurisdiction on private property unless whatever it is you're doing affects another party. But if it doesn't affect another party, your private property is your private property. Now, does that mean you can have guns and ammunition and all that stuff on your property, blah, 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 blah. We ain't talking about that bull right now, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the Philippines, in the Philippines, in the Philippines, administrative orders are issued by the president as an administrative head of government. See, there's no longer any kings in the Philippines. In Michigan, all trial courts are mandated to issue local administrative orders. All trial courts are mandated to issue local administrative orders to establish court policies. By That's why all of your courts put out their local rules. And it's signed by the presiding judge of the court because it now becomes an order and now it can be enforceable. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, let me make sure you understand. Administrative orders do not apply to the private citizen. Does not apply to the private person. Administrative means executive. The executive branch has no jurisdiction over the private person. He's only to administer government, not to administer the people. Look, the government was set up to administer justice. That's all they were supposed to. Well, technically, they weren't even set up to administer justice. Let's, let's rewind the tape. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, okay? They're the ones who said to provide for the common defense and ensure domestic tranquility. Okay, then they said to promote. What are they promoting? Administration of justice. Why are they promoting administration of justice? Is it the court or is it the people? Go back and read the preamble. The courts do not administer justice. There is nothing in anybody's constitution where they get to administer justice. It is the people who do so, and they do so through creating laws. That, that was the whole purpose of it. 
Go back and take a look. That's the way it was set up. California has such a system. That's why California has proclamations. They people get to put together. Uh, uh, they get to get they get get to put together little proclamations that they refer to as uh, propositions. And their propositions, because somebody's propositioning someone, they proposition the rest of the public, and it passes, and it becomes law. Not what the legislative does, but what the people do. That's what the United States was supposed to be set up. But <laughs> hold on now. The people have acquiesced to this other system. Now, types of administrative orders. There are several types of administrative orders. Some examples include an order for the publication and adoption of a statewide rule. Well, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Statewide rule. Rules are not laws. You don't have to obey a rule. You do have to obey the law. Everybody has to be law-abiding, but there is no such thing as a rule-abiding citizen. Okay, orders approving local rules, appointment of judicial boards, commissions, and task force, attorney resignation orders, orders transferring appellate cases. An order transferring appellate case, it's pay attention, is an administrative order. Judicial appointment to state bar disciplinary action and other orders. The courts operate under an administrative capacity. That's why they can pay attention, issue administrative orders. I didn't say it. You heard right here that the appointment to judicial boards and to the commission are administrative orders. When a judge issues a local rule, local order, that is an administrative order. Administrative order definition. An administrative order is a legal document issued by an administrative agency, such as an environmental protection agency, that affects an individual business or entity with specific action. An administrative order is a decision issued by a governmental agency through its administrative court judge, administrative judge, not administrative court judge, administrative judge, on matters of disputes between parties. An administrative order, AO, like the Administrative Office of the United States Court, is a formal and legally binding agreement between you and a creditor to pay back your debt over a period of time. An administrative order is a formal and legally binding agreement? Interesting, huh? Types of administrative orders. Well, we've already done this, but let's do it again. Types of administrative orders include order for publication, so adopting the state right rule, appointment of judicial officers, and blah, blah, blah. Now, this is perplexity.com. So everything that we just showed you is perplexity.com. Perplex, perplex, perplexity.com. Now, administrative order definition, examples of administrative order, administrative order process. I'm interested in administrative order process, so we're going to click on the plus sign. Plus, mama, plus, plus, plus what? Oh, no, I don't have no plus ones. No, I'm just by myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you plus yourself right on out that dress. You, you did it five years ago. You know why you're still trying to make it look like you can fit into it? Oh, 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 I'm still, the mic is still, oh, I'm sorry, mama. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Administrative orders are documents used to document and mandate continual policy standards, requirements, and procedures prescribed by an office organization, such as the, pay attention, Federal Operating Circular. In the United States, administrative orders are issued by federal and state governments. For example, in Maryland, courts issue administrative orders to document and mandate continuing policy standard requirements and procedures. The process of issuing an administrative order varies depending on the organization. Generally speaking, the process involves a proposal being submitted to the relevant authority for consideration. The authority then reviews the proposal and decides on whether or not to issue an administrative order. If approved, the order is published in a public form, such as a newspaper or a website. Ladies and gentlemen, you know you get to administer your own affairs. Let's do that. Let's do, let's go right here. The text of the preamble to the Constitution for the United States of America. You gotta turn that off, I don't, it will shut this video off in a split second if I keep talking. Now I want you guys, we're gonna do the details. Always do the details, don't do the short version, do the details, get as much as you can out of it, okay? 
the preamble of the Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, establish, establish justice, establish, establish justice. The people said, we, the people, to establish justice. It's not the courts who get to administer it. We establish it. Ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our prosperity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. They'll say, well, this is not the people. The people didn't. The preamble is not part of the constitution. Let me do you guys a favor. The people said, we ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Nobody gets to say that this is not part of the constitution. No one. That's right. It was longer than this when they first came up with it, but the people finally settled on this short phrase. The first one was a whole lot better. The first one that was longer, man, that thing was so good. Oh, God. But they came up with the shorter one. This is the one. Now, wait, hold on now. Some of y'all are going to believe what y'all hear from these so-called ignorant people who claim they know what the law is. This was a contract, people. The Constitution, the Constitution. The preamble to the Constitution of the United States reads, the Constitution of the United States of America. Okay, this was an agreement. And the people ordained it. Let me make sure y'all understand, because y'all heard of an ordained minister. The definition for ordained. I apologize. The brief, I hit the <laughs> the pause button for the computer. And so I had to retype some things in before I could get back on. So I apologize for that little brief pause and intermission. The definition of date. I, I said ordain. Oh, my bad, y'all. I don't care about no definition for date. Uh, I had it right, but I, I didn't look at it. I was moving too fast. Mama, he, he is moving too fast. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, definition for a Dane. Come on now, we always do the, the precise one, the more defined definition. The definition for a Dane is to invest officially as by the laying on of hands with ministerial or policely authority. It can also mean to enact or establish by law edict, etc., or to decree, give. Additionally, it can refer to officially making someone a priest or other religious leader in a religious ceremony. All baptized Jehovah's Witnesses are ordained ministers. Just that simple. Every single one of them. Now, that's how I know what the definition of ordained is, because I looked it up once I found that little tidbit out. By law, they are ordained ministers. Now, the preamble, it says, do ordain and establish this constitution. I want you guys, for you guys to understand about the United States and its, pay attention, origins. The definition of ordain is to invest officially. It also means to enact or establish by law, edict or decree. So the people established the Constitution, not Congress. The people established the Constitution, not Congress, not the judicial branch, and not the executive branch. They don't get to tell the people what the Constitution means or meant or should have meant. I know, I know, it sounds like I'm heavily invested in this. Ladies and gentlemen, so that you understand, administrative agencies are controlled administratively, not judicially. So you have to attack them administratively. Been trying to figure out how to do that for years until I came across this administrative order. I, no, 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 I want y'all to understand because I have to make sure you get this. You all know that I profess to be one of Jehovah's Christian witnesses. And that profession I will carry with me for the rest of the existence that I have. What you need to understand is, I asked him for direction 
because we have all of you people, 80 million of you about to lose your homes or having to refinance or something like that when you don't have to refinance. We've already proved to you that as long as a promissory note contains an order, paid to the order of, it cannot be a promissory note. Watch this so that you make sure you understand. UCC, Article 9, Section 102, Subsection 65. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have it explain itself, but a promissory note does not evidence an order to pay. Well, anytime your promissory note carries the statement, pay to the order, pay attention, pay to order, anytime your promissory note contains a statement that it is an order, it is not a promissory note. Okay, we don't care what a promissory note is. We care what it is not. A promissory note does not evidence an order to pay. A promissory note is a written, pro see, it, it does that. We don't care about none of this. We didn't ask it for any of this. Well, yes, you did. Notice what you did. See, it told you what the answer was, but you weren't willing to take that answer. You wanted a more detailed answer, so it gave you more detail. <sighs> Noteworthy, should lenders use promissory notes today, many, Legal sophisticated loans are noteless, with a promissory note being issued only if tender requests one, or excuse me, if a lender requests one. A promissory note evidences an obligation to repay a loan. Okay, promissory notes. What is it? Different types, pros and cons. Promissory note is a financial instrument that contains a written promise to pay, but it can never contain an order to pay. Okay, but we didn't ask what a promissory note was. We asked what a promissory note was not. See, and it keeps talking about what is, what is, what is. So I want you guys to understand, under the Uniform Commercial Code, which is adopted, pay attention, this is very important that you highlight this, the Uniform Commercial Code is adopted by every state in the union. And because it's adopted by every state in the union, all administrative agencies must follow the code. Just that simple. It, there is no other way around it. The states adopted it, so they must obey it. What does the Uniform Commercial Code say? A promissory note is defined as an instrument that evidences a promise to pay, a monetary obligation. A promissory note does not evidence an order to pay. Look. If a promissory note has an order to pay on it, then it's not a promissory note, ladies and gentlemen. It's known as a negotiable instrument. Now watch this. Let me tell you the actual type of instrument it is. What is a bearer instrument? Stop listening. A bearer instrument is a type of fixed income security where the issuer keeps no ownership information on record and the security is issued in physical form pay 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 attention ladies and gentlemen a bearer instrument is a security it is payable to anyone possessing the instrument and is negotiable by transfer alone this is what y'all want right here that is negotiable by transference alone so guess what? The moment you gave it to the Federal Reserve, local Federal Reserve agent, that constituted as payment because it's a negotiable instrument. You don't believe me? Go back, look at this video, type in what I type in and see it for yourself. Bearer instrument. This is the definition of bearer instrument or bearer bond. That's right. It's a bearer bond. But bearer bonds are illegal in the United States. Not true, people. 
We do it every single time we do a loan. Is a type of fixed income security in which no ownership information is recorded and the security is issued in physical form. That's the definition we just read. Why is it that no ownership information is recorded? And we're going to do this one right here, the Law Insider. The, the reason why no owner information is recorded because it's not a specific endorsement. It's a blank endorsement. You just sign it. So there's no name on it. So no ownership information is recorded. So it's whoever holds the instrument. So whomever you transfer it to, they now become the holder in due course. Okay, many in the following instruments with titles that are capable of being transferred by delivery. Sample one. Let's go to sample one. Financial Services and Marketing Act. This is a statutory thing. Where is this? In it? Look, it's an order. Uh-oh, hold on, y'all. This is an order, an administrative order. I will put this in the link so that you guys, somebody will be able to do something with this. Because remember, we're talking about negotiable instruments and bearer instruments. Okay? And it's got codes and everything. Let's make sure this for the United States. Hold on. Order. See, it got all these orders attached to it, y'all. Uh-oh, uh, overseas person. Ooh-wee. They even talk about them, the Maritimes. Yeah, they, 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 Merit, Merit. Uh-oh, I saw United Kingdom. I think this might be for Britain. Oh, you British people, y'all going to be able to know the website. Oh, this is Britain. Legislation.gov.uk forward slash UKS dot 2005 forward slash 1529 forward slash part P-A-R-T forward slash backslash forward slash one. Oh, no, 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 no. It's It, I, it looks like a backslash, but it's not. It's uh, Roman numeral six. So forward slash part forward slash Roman numeral six forward slash 2010 hyphen zero two hyphen 24 forward slash data dot PDF. That's the entire address, okay, because I don't need it because this is for Britain. Some of you could use it because the language is going to be the same. It's the same. Now, that's just a sample, an example on investment. So the insider.com and put in bearer instrument de definition, okay, bearer instrument definition means an instrument in relation to the shares of PLC. Oh, this is in their contracts. They actually put in their contracts that it's a bearer share or a bearer instrument or a bearer bond or a bearer security. A bearer and order instrument. A promissory note, bill of exchange or check is payable to the bearer, which is expressed to be so payable and on which the only or at least or excuse me, the only or last endorsement is an endorsement in blank. And the term bearer instrument means an instrument whose payment can be taken by any person who has the lawful possession of the instrument. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is exactly what's going on. This is why you don't owe any monies on your mortgage. Because you gave them a bearer instrument with just one signature, pay attention, on which only one endorsement, and it's in blank. You did it in blank, people. You put your name on that bearer instrument in blank. That means that your obligations, the thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away, is gone. That's why we're doing the petition to enforce an administrative order. That's why we're doing the petition to enforce an administrative order. That's why we're doing the petition to enforce an administrative order. All of these people have been kicked out of their homes, and if you've been evicted out of your home, you better go back in. You better go back in court because there's no statute of limitations on fraud. Hold on. Uh, perplexity? No, I'm going to call her Susan. Wake up. Susan? Susan, comma, is there a statute of limitations on fraud? 
Question mark. Stop listening. We're not going to create no song called Susan Susan, okay? Her name is just going to be Susan, Kevin and Susan, okay? Swinging in a tree. Anyway, the statute of limitations on fraud varies, very, very varies depending on the jurisdiction and the type of fraud. Generally, it is a 10-year for most bank fraud crimes, 5 to 10 years for immigration offenses, 6 years in a U.S. Court of Federal Claims, and 12 years in Florida, 6 years in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, they are right for certain crimes. However, there is no statute of limitations on fraud because you can bring a claim when you first receive knowledge of the actual crime or when the last overt act has been accomplished. Wake up. The statute of limitations on conspiracy. Stop listening. It says the statute of limitations on conspiracy is five years, y'all. Wake up. Susan, is it true that the statute of limitation does not commence to run until the last overt act has been accomplished? Question mark. Stop listening. Yes, the statute of limitation for conspiracy begins to run when the last overt act is completed. They're still committing the fraud. Okay? What is an overt act? Let's find that out, y'all. An overt act is an action that might be innocent by itself, but when part of the preparation and act furtherances of a crime is evidence of a criminal intent. Ladies and gentlemen, overt act basically means anything that was done in the furtherance of a crime. And you see this right here and the consequences thereof. You're losing your home. That's an overt act. Can include prosecution for conspiracy as it is evidence of a criminal intent. The difficulties of prosecuting someone for conspiracy lies in proving the existence of an overt act, that they did something deliberately, intentionally, and willfully. Okay, that's what's going on here. So you can take this video, highlight it, and say, no, I just found out about this when that mother did this video. And if he had not done this video and I had not watched this video, I wouldn't understand that, Your Honor. So of course I can bring up this claim at this time. That's right. That's what I'm doing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are part of any one of our agreements, this will be under 30 minutes or less. Um, you're going to be receiving documentation soon. Do not rush us because, again, nobody has done this before, ladies and gentlemen, especially respecting mortgages, especially the way we're doing. It's the first time. So be patient because they are not going to acquiesce as quickly as you think they're going to acquiesce. Underneath these videos is going to be the link to this folder. Lawsuit and application for enforcement. And that link will be the files associated with this information right here. As a matter of fact, we're going to even put this search page that we did right here. We're going to print this. Uh-oh, let's see. I don't think it's going to let me print. But we're going to print this page. Where's print? Okay, we're going to print this page and save it as a PDF. I'm not going to print it on my Hewlett Packard. We're going to save as a PDF. And we're going to save it in documents because we ain't going to save it in the YouTube folder. That that wouldn't make no sense. Save. And there it is. Ta-da! I mean, uh, <clears throat> saved as a PDF, y'all. All right. And like I said, in under 30 minutes, we'll put the PDF in that folder as well. So you guys will even have that. I got to go, got to go, got to go. Got things I need to try to do. Arrivederci.